بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد cleanliness and purification are a part of Islam and are considered very important aspects of Islam Nidhafa things related to hygiene brushing one's teeth cleaning oneself when going to the restroom and so forth and the scholars of Islam have spoken extensively about purification and in the books of fiqh and one of the things that we'll find and that there are, are many and countless hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam related to that is using the miswak using the toothbrush or the the stick which comes from the Arawak tree that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to brush his teeth with alayhi salatu wassalam An Abi Hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu an Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam qaal lawla an ushukka ala ummati li yamartuhum بِسَوَاكِ عِنْدَ كُلِّ صَلَاتِ مُتَفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ رواه بخاري ومسلم. In this hadith of the Prophet وسلم, which illustrates the principle that we're talking about or illustrates what we are discussing which is using the miswak Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه said that the Prophet وسلم, said that if I did not fear the difficulty it would the burden that it would place upon my ummah, upon my community, then I would have commanded them with the sawak to use to brush their teeth during for every salat, in the kulli salat, and this is related in Bukhari and Muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it illustrates for us the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it illustrates also the mahabba or the love that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had for his ummah and the mercy and the want or the desire for guidance for his nation Alayhi Salatu Wasallam and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless us all with guidance and that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was fearful that by commanding his ummah to make to use the miswak that it would become an obligation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reveal to him that it would be an obligation upon the ummah to do that meaning that every time we had to pray and we made wudu that we would have to use the miswak but instead we find that this is something which is recommended it is recommended. This is part of the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in this hadith we find many great benefits. And one of the reasons why we know that it is not an obligation and it illustrates for us a very important principle in the, sh in the Sharia is that the asl fil amr al-wujub or amr yufid al-wujub that whenever there's a commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the shara, that this is evidence that that thing that was commanded with is an obligation. So if Allah commands us with something, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَأَقِيمُ salat and establish the prayer. That's a commandment that lets us know that prayer is an obligation. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded us with many things and prohibited us from many things and that's evidence that those things he commanded with are uh, an obligation and those things which he pro prohibited the asl of them or the, found, the, the 
origin of those things he prohibited us from is that they are prohibited, that they are haram. For example, the Prophet wasallam said that if uh, that, that, for example, the prohibition of bid'ah or the prohibition the Prophet ﷺ said, "Men ahdatha fi amrina hada malisa minhu fuwarat." What men ahdatha fi amrina hada? Whoever innovates in this matter of our affairs uh, of ours will have it rejected. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Alaykum bi sunnati." He he ordered us. He said, "Is upon you my sunnah." That shows that that is a commandment. It's a commandment what to follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, not to follow our desires to follow secularist ideologies or anything which contradicts the commandments of the Prophet ﷺ or to use our logic and intellect to battle the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but rather it's not based upon our desires it's based upon what? the sunnah of the messenger of Allah والسلام, and the commands of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala who created us and created the heavens and earth subhanahu wa ta'ala so that illustrates for us that qaida or that principle that Al-Amr Yufid al wujub that whenever we hear a commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that it is an obligation for us to fulfill. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings and for not fulfilling the commandments that he and his messenger alayhi salatu wa sallam have commanded us with. And so this hadith illustrates for us the mercy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he out of fearfulness of that be becoming an obligation upon us, he restrained from commanding it. That also shows us again, that qaida, that if he would have commanded it, it would have become an obligation. So that's dalil, or that's evidence, that al-amr yufid al-wujub, that's a qaida shari'ya, that uh, principle that when the Prophet wasallam said, this is where that qaida comes from, lola, lola and ushukka, that if I wasn't fearful that it would become an obligation or the difficulty it would be upon my ummah, I would have commanded them to use the miswak for every salat. So that shows the Prophet ﷺ was fearful that that would become an obligation. And again, it goes back to al-amr yufid al-wujub, that a commandment in the sharia is evidence that it is an obligation to fulfill. Some of the other benefits we gain, gain from this hadith is the istihbab al-siwak, that it is recommended, uh, that is mustahab, to use the miswak, to use it to clean our teeth and, and to keep ourselves uh, clean. And that is the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. So we know this, and it also illustrates for us the different ahkam in the sharia, that the sharia is not based on just that's prohibited and that's permissible or that, that, that is an obligation that's uh, prohibited. But that there's other darajat, there's other levels in the sharia, the khamsa ahkam, that things can be an obligation. Or they can go from that, from an obligation down to being mustahab, being recommended. Or they can go down from being recommended to being permissible, but there's no reward with it, mubah. For example, wearing this t-shirt, it's mubah. I'm covering myself properly, but it is, it's permissible. But there's no particular reward uh, related to it, and there's no sin related to it. There's no ajr, and there's no uh, punishment related to it. For example, also, mubah. If I were to take an apple and eat an apple, it's not, it's mubah to eat an apple. It's permissible. But there's no ajr for eating that apple, unless you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make your, your, your body strong in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better. Then, of course, then it changes from mubah, being permissible, to being something which is uh, recommended. So, the ahkam, what, I, what I'm trying to illustrate for us, is that ahkam, it can change. Be, depending on what? Be t depending upon the intention. In the ma'mal bin yat, as the Prophet wasallam said, verily actions are tied to the intentions. And everyone shall get that for which he intended. So there, it shows us there 
that in accordance with our niya, this change this can change uh, the ahkam. It can change from being mubah, from being permissible, to being mustahab, to being uh, something permissible. Or it can change from being mubah to muharram, the opposite way. It can go to being uh, from to from permissible to being disliked, or from dislike to being haram. And all that depends upon the intention. Another benefit we gain from this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. is that by using the miswak, it is one of the forms of ibadah, of worship, and a way in which we come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, who created us. So by using the miswak, because it's mustahab, that means it is something that allows us to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is... Uh, in accordance with the statement of Ibn Daqiq al-Eid Rahimahullah Ta'ala who said He said Asir ana ma'murun fi kulli halatin min ahwal at-taqarrub ila Allah Azza wa Jal an nakun fi halat al-kamal wa nadhafa idhharan li-sharf al-ibadah wa qad qil inna dhalika al-amr yata'alak bil-malk فَإِنَّهُ يَتَأَذَّى بِرَائِهَا الْكَرِيَةِ Imam Ibn Daqiq al-Eid, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that it shows that in every circumstance that we are ordered, every circumstances that we are we, we are ordered to come closer to Allah by being pure and having nadafa, cleanliness and hygiene. That this is a way in which we uh, come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that by, by uh, having filth and impurities on our bodies and so forth, then that is a way in which that is something dislike, karahiyya and filth and you know having a, 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 a a smell, a displeasing smell, displeasing scent. That these things are things which cause harmful, uh, uh, cause harmfulness, or spread harmfulness, and are harmful to us and other human beings. And then, one of the examples that Imam as Sanani mentioned is that, for example, when a person, as is mentioned in a hadith of the Prophet wasallam, goes into the masjid after eating garlic or eating uh, eating uh, onions. That onions and garlic, they give off a foul smell that people find displeasing and the angels find displeasing. So this is why the Prophet wasallam ordered us to stay away from the masjid in that condition, in that state, after eating garlic and onions. So we know that the asl of eating garlics and garlic and onion is that it's, it's permissible. It's mubah. There's no ajr with it, as we mentioned, and there's no sin by eating it. However, if you're going to eat it before going to the masjid, then that's when it goes from being mubah to perhaps either karahiyya, disliked, or it could be muharram. And we have to look into that issue to see what the, the scholars say in regards to that issue. Is it uh, muharram to do that, or is it something what is karahiyya, which is disliked? If it is Muharram, then of course it's sinful. If it is uh, Karahiyya, then it is considered disliked, but it's still not a sin. And we should try to avoid, under all circumstances, doing things which are disliked uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. Another benefit we gain from this hadith is this hadith also illustrates for us the benefit and the importance of wudu and salat and tahara and purification and using also the miswak during tahara so after making wudu or before making wudu or uh, various times of the day whenever you want it is recommended to use the miswak and that's why the prophet sallallahu said lo la nashqala ummati li amartum bi sawak in kulli salat at least during the salat for sure this hadith gives us evidence that uh, to use the miswak 
before the Salat, that this is something recommended, something you will be rewarded from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, by, by doing. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us the perfect mercy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that the Sharia came with ease and not difficulty. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.